if you're watching this, I probably sent it to you because you're about to second shoot for me or something like that. Um, so thanks for giving this a watch. Um, and I hope it helps out a little bit and kind of sets the expectations of things that I need. Um, we're going to be going over some footage that I second shot for a buddy of mine and um, things that I try to keep in mind while I'm doing groom prep um, or just prep in general. It's something that you can take into um, your videos and uh, things like that. Number one we're going to be talking about is just holding the shot um, or just getting the shot. So a lot of people, they'll see the groom buttoning up his shirt. So they'll want to get a close up of his hands and then quickly pan out. Uh, or zoom out and then get him like a medium shot of him buttoning up. Uh, preferably, I would rather you just get the one shot and hold it for five to 10 seconds rather than trying to panic panic and get at least three other shots in 10 seconds. Um, that just doesn't help anybody for editing. Um, if you've tried to shoot like that and then edit that, it just doesn't work out. I would rather you just get a great basic shot of like a detail or a medium and we can go from there. Um, so holding the shot is super important. Personally, I try to do five to 10 seconds for every clip. Um, no shaking, no panning around, um, just a nice steady clip. Um, no zooming in or out, detail, wide, whatever. Um, just getting the basic shot and just getting a clean shot. Um, the second thing is the rule of thirds. I always try to implement the rule of thirds when I'm doing um, groom prep or any kind of prep in the morning. It just makes your shot a little bit more dynamic when you're shooting the rule of thirds. Um, preferably, I try to shoot like over a shoulder or like under somebody's hands. Um, you'll see that a lot in the clips that we're gonna take a look at. So um, it doesn't always have to be a close up. Sometimes I like to station our groom um, a little bit off to the side and have him like looking out the window and you're getting the window on one side and you're getting him like buttoning up on the other side, still implementing the rule of thirds. Um, it's just a great way to break up a video of just centered weighted shots. Um, so the rule of thirds is something that I specifically love for details in general, but um, something that I keep in the back of my mind for all shots. The third thing, which actually might be the most important is just building rapport with the client. Um, the clips you're gonna watch, um, I second shot for a friend. I had never talked to these clients before. Um, just never met with them, nothing. So the first thing I try to do when I walk into the room is um, see who the, the groom is in general, but um, just kind of talk to him and feel out the situation. You're there to film, but also you want him to be as low stress as possible. Um, you want to be friendly. So usually what I do when I walk into the room like this situation, uh, I found Vin and I was just like, hey, what's up? Uh, dapped him up, gave him a hug, it was nice to meet you, uh, can't wait for your day, tell him how excited I am, um, how great he's already looking, how great the room looks. Just try to, to overall hype him up, just make him feel great, um, because if he's feeling good and you guys have a great vibe, then you know asking him for something extra would just, he'll be more than happy to do it. So building rapport is something that I think is very important. It just goes along with the client experience. If he's having a good time, you're having a good time, and then everything's gonna go as smooth as possible. The fourth thing, um, which is a little bit more technical, is filming the dark side. Um, <laughs> this isn't Star Wars, I know. Uh, I'll throw up some details when we get to the clip portion, but I like to film the dark side of things. So you can see here that this is my dark side. The light side is actually over here. Um, it adds a little bit more dynamics to the shot, uh, makes it more interesting, um, adds a little mystery. So I, I, I like to shoot dark and I definitely like filming the dark side of things. So uh, with that being said, let's just jump into some of these clips here. Cool, so I wanna take a look at some of these clips. Um, the first one would be about holding the shot, of course. Um, you can see in here that I just wanted to get a shot of the background since it was kind of cool. Um, I find my shot and I just kind of hold it for five to 10 seconds. Uh, nothing crazy here. Um, after I, I hold the shot for about five seconds, I'm like, you know what? Time, to, time now to go for something else. But yeah, so now I get another shot using the rule of thirds. He walks into it. Uh, 
no worries though. Still filming, still getting the shot. I know he's gonna walk out. Um, same thing here. I see the photographer kind of creeping in, so I kind of move over a little bit. Um, creeps in a little bit more, so I move over just a little bit more. Um, but still holding my shot, doesn't matter if his friend's putting his forehead in, uh, I'm still getting it. So same thing here, just your basic shoe shot. Uh, still holding it, he puts his foot out, so I find another little composition, uh, back up a little bit, but I know there's plenty of time to get still the five to 10 seconds of holding the shot. The second thing would be the rule of thirds. Um, it's something that I use a lot for groom prep. Uh, it just makes your shots a little bit more dynamic and adds a little bit of uh, more mystery, I guess, to your shots. Um, I always have a bad habit to shoot at the lower right hand corner, so I try to keep that in mind uh, and get more than just the lower right hand, but you can see it here twice in a row. Um, you can see it more often than not that I shoot in the lower right. Um, but it's just something I try to keep in, in mind and just kind of break every so often. Um, but yeah, so here you can see that his friend kind of dips into my shot, so I'm, st I'm still kind of holding it. Uh, I decide I've, I've gotten at least five seconds, so it's not terrible if I decide to move here. So I end up moving and still holding another shot. <coughs> holding another shot. Uh, here's a medium shot, like I said. Uh, I got the five seconds I needed for that close up, so I moved up to his face. Uh, still a medium shot again. Same thing here. Ask the, the, the best man if he can kind of judge. The, uh, the bow tie there. Same thing here in the mirror, I've got the rule of thirds, uh, Vin on both sides there. Um, you can see my arm in there, but I'm not too worried about it. So just kind of holding the shot there, getting what I need. The next thing, like I said, is building rapport with the client. Um, you can see me here, I kind of carry on with them all day, have fun, just make some jokes. I mean, everybody there is, is there for a good time. Uh, so I ask him like, hey, will you get do your own suspender? So, uh, asking for shots is never a bad thing, especially if you want to get something specific. Um, you can see here his buddy is uh, getting his bow tie, but you know what, I kind of want a shot of his bow tie, so I get one myself. Still holding the shot, kind of getting more angles than just like your regular static shot, but uh, still getting at least five to 10 seconds of what I need. Uh, here you can see where the guys walk in the background, so I decide to quickly adjust. Uh, nothing crazy so I can get the whole shot that I need for this medium. Uh, still get it though for at least five to 10 seconds. Um, another detail, hey Vin, nice watch. Like, can we get a close up of that? So I get a little close up, nothing super crazy. Um, here's something that's very important. I had an idea and I wanted to do it. So I asked him like, hey, do you mind if we take 30 seconds and get this real quick? I took one take, this was it. Uh, I thought it'd be super nice for Kyle to add to his edit. So. Uh, asking for, for shots specifically is not a bad idea. Um, it goes a long way for me, and uh, I think that's what defines like a very good second shooter and then somebody that's kind of just like average. Um, I just wanna say that I cleaned that whole side of the room that you're seeing, and you can see kind of the disaster, which is their room. So lastly, I just wanna talk about shooting the dark side. Um, I'll put in some screenshots of how you can see that directors are purposely shooting the dark side of the face and then the light side is over here, kind of like you see now. Um, it just adds a little bit of mystery and, and makes your shot just that much more dynamic. It's just something that I try to implement as much as possible. There wasn't much with uh, Vin, so I'm gonna add in this other footage from another wedding. This is um, Kelly reading her letter. You can see I have a nice steady shot. I'm on a monopod, so there's a little bit, but not anything terrible. Um, again, shooting the dark side for the details, even she's facing the light, I'm shooting from the dark side of things. Uh, same thing here, using the rule of thirds again, holding my shot out, uh, shooting with the dark side. So uh, the dark side is the way to go. That's just kind of something that I try to do with my shots. So, so that kind of wraps things up and uh, you kind of understand my expectations of things. Um, if you have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to reach out, ask me anything. Um, but most importantly, hold your shots out, five to 10 seconds, rule of thirds, uh, building rapport with the client so you're not scared to talk to them, they're not scared to talk to you, um, and just shooting the dark side just to add a little bit of mystery and uh, make your shots a little bit more dynamic. But uh, I just wanna say thanks for giving this a watch. Uh, it means a lot to me. 
and uh, appreciate you.